The mass spectrometer, as you have already learned, is an accurate tool for comparing the masses of atoms and for the detection of isotopes. Mass spectrometry has many other important uses. It is the main method for determining the relative atomic mass of an element and for determining the relative molecular mass and molecular formula of an unknown compound. One other use of mass spectrometry is the determination of the structure of an unknown compound. This is especially important in organic chemistry. Click on Activity 1 to begin the lesson. In the lesson on the mass spectrometer, you learn how you can determine the relative mass of an atom from the mass spectrum of an element. What else can we use the mass spectrum for? Let us take a look at copper again. Click on Insert Sample to insert a sample of copper. Notice that there are two peaks close together in the mass spectrum of copper. This tells us that copper consists of two isotopes. Move your cursor over the peaks in the mass spectrum to determine the relative masses of these two isotopes. When an element consists of two or more isotopes in its naturally occurring state, its relative atomic mass is taken as the average of the masses of the isotopes, taking into account the relative abundance of each isotope. What do you understand by the term relative abundance of each isotope? Answer. The proportion of each isotope present expressed as a percentage. Let us now calculate the relative atomic mass of copper. Find the relative masses of the isotopes and the peak heights from the mass spectrum and enter them into the appropriate boxes on the table. If you are correct, you will be allowed to continue with the calculation. Work out the percentage abundance of each isotope in the mixture and enter your values in the table. Now drag the appropriate values from the table into the equation below. The equation shows how to calculate the weighted average of the masses of the two isotopes. Use a calculator to work out the relative atomic mass of copper correct to one decimal place. Type your answer in the box provided. If you are correct, a tick will appear. Summary. The relative atomic mass of an element is the average of the relative masses of its isotopes in the naturally occurring isotopic mixture. The relative abundance and mass of each isotope is needed to calculate the relative atomic mass. The relative abundance of the isotopes can be calculated from the heights of the isotope peaks in the mass spectrum of the element. Mass spectrometry is also used to find the relative mass of a molecule. Let us see what happens when a sample of fluorine gas is put into the mass spectrometer. How many atoms are there in one molecule of fluorine? Answer 2. Click on 
insert sample to introduce a sample of fluorine gas into the mass spectrometer. What happens to the fluorine gas molecules as electrons strike them? Answer. They are converted into positive ions. Note that there are two types of ions produced. Why is this so? Click on to page 2 to find out. The fluorine molecules are ionized into positive ions. Some of these ions break up or fragment into a neutral atom and a positive ion. Click on Insert Sample to obtain the mass spectrum of fluorine. How many peaks do you see? Answer, 2. What are the relative masses of the peaks? Answer, 19 and 38. The peak of highest mass, 38, corresponds to the F2 plus ion, which is called the molecular or parent ion. The relative mass of the molecular ion is taken as the relative mass of the fluorine molecule. The peak at 19 is due to the fragment ion. F plus. Things get more complicated when an element consists of isotopes. Chlorine is an example. Chlorine has two isotopes. Click on Insert Sample to introduce a sample of chlorine gas into the mass spectrometer. Look at the molecules emerging from the vaporization chamber. The heavier isotope is shown in darker green. How many different types of chlorine molecules are there? Answer, 3. How many peaks at lower mass do you see in the mass spectrum? Answer, 2. Let us now look at the peaks at higher mass. What are the relative masses of the three chlorine molecules? Answer, 70, 72, and 74. What are the relative masses of the two isotopes? Answer, 35 and 37. What can you deduce about the atoms present in the three different chlorine molecules? Answer. The chlorine molecules contain two similar atoms or two different atoms. The molecules are chlorine 35, chlorine 35, chlorine 35, 
chlorine 37 and chlorine 37 chlorine 37 Find the relative abundance of the two isotopes of chlorine and use this data to calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine. Enter your answer to one decimal place in the box on the screen. By finding the molecular mass of an unknown compound from its mass spectrum, we can also find the molecular formula if the empirical formula is known. Click on Insert Sample to introduce an unknown organic compound into the mass spectrometer. What is the relative molecular mass of the unknown organic compound? Answer, 60. What are the masses of the fragment ion? Answer, 15, 43 and 45. The empirical formula of the compound is CH2O. What is the molecular formula of the compound? Answer, c 2 h 4 O2. Information about the fragmentation of a molecule in the mass spectrometer can help us determine the structure of the molecule. The fragment ion CH3 plus is responsible for the peak at mass 15. Determine which of the structures shown is that of the organic compound which produces this mass spectrum. Answer B. Summary. Loss of an electron from a molecule in a mass spectrometer gives rise to a molecular ion, M+. Some of the molecular ions break up to form fragment ions, which have lower masses than the molecular ions. The molecular ion gives the peak of highest mass in the mass spectrum. The mass of the molecular ion gives the relative molecular mass of the molecule. Molecules containing atoms that exist in two or more isotopic forms will give two or more molecular ions. The molecular formula of a compound can be determined from its relative molecular mass if its empirical formula is known.